Hello, and welcome to East Weymouth Congregational Church. I'm Reverend Gretchen, welcome. We're so glad you found us here. And know that we're also around in the community. If you need someone to talk to, if you need a prayer, if you need some kind of service in the community, please do reach out to us. We are here for you, we care. We have a saying that we hope can be abundantly true in our denomination, and it is that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. So may you find yourselves welcome with us and welcome with God, the Almighty One, who loves you. Let us open with this prayer on this spring day. Let us pray. Miraculous God, Come to us now, even as your Son came to those first disciples on the shores of Galilee. Speak your peace to our hearts, touch us with your Holy Spirit, reveal your word that we might bear your message this day and live as your disciples in the days and years to come. In Christ's name we pray. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome. Today is Mother's Day, and we want to acknowledge all the women we're blessed to know. We rejoice over you, for your strength, your wisdom, your strong love, and your beautiful faith. Whether today is a celebration for you or a day of quiet reflection and healing, we're thinking of all of you. If you gave birth this year to your first child, our joy overflows and we celebrate with you. If you adopted a child this year or became a foster parent, we rejoice with you and we want to honor you in your commitment to changing the lives of children. If you continue to struggle with infertility, we are hoping with you and holding your hand in prayer. If you are exhausted and feeling underappreciated for all you do for a house full of kids, we applaud you. We love you and we appreciate you more than you can ever imagine. And if you lost a child this year to death or miscarriage, we weep and mourn with you. And if your child is lost to addiction or to the world, we hurt with you, and we join you in putting our hope in the one who brings prodigals home. 
if you live with painful memories of your mom. We pray that you will find in a spiritual mother all that you never had from a birth mom. And if you're one of those amazing spiritual moms, we thank you for stepping up and being there when others couldn't. If you're experiencing an empty nest for the first time this year, we walk with you in this new season and are excited about the next chapter God has planned for you. If you're single, we celebrate your strength, beauty, and individuality and join with you in praying for the desires of your heart. If you're a single mom and wonder if you have the physical energy and financial resources to raise and provide for your child or children, we want to help you, and we will. And if you're pregnant for the first time, we prayerfully anticipate with you the joyful birth of a healthy child. And to all the special women on this Mother's Day, rest and delight in knowing that we are thankful for you, and we celebrate each and every one of you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture today is from the book of John, John 15, verses 9 to 17, on being chosen. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. 
This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I choose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, and may he add his blessing to these words. Today, for our gospel lesson from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 15, we hear so much about how God has chosen us, how God chooses you, and not only chooses you, but deems you to be God's friend, deems you to be a friend of Christ. And what song can we all think of, surely, when we think about being a friend of Christ, but of course, the classic hymn. I will offer to you these first verses in song and share a story to you about the actual composer of this song and what we can learn about him through his song and through his life. So sing along with me if you'd like. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I'm sure that rings a bell. As with so many of our great hymns of our faith, there's a very inspirational story to this popular gospel song. Irishman named Joseph Scriven, he found God's deep and faithful friendship in the midst of very intense and emotional pain. After graduating from the University of Dublin, Scriven became engaged to Mary, but on the eve of their wedding, his bride-to-be was thrown from her horse while crossing a bridge. And Scriven, who was waiting for her on the other side of the river, could only watch helplessly as she drowned. It would be hard to imagine a more heartbreaking experience and yet it was through this traumatic loss that Joseph Scriven found God's mercy and salvation. He moved to Canada, and 10 years later, he fell in love, and he became engaged for a second time, but once more, tragedy struck. His fiance caught a chill while swimming, which developed into tuberculosis, and she died after a three-year illness, and they never married. Late one night, when he was suffering from very profound grief and loneliness, as you can only imagine, Scriven begged God for comfort, promising to serve him faithfully if God would heal his heart. And God answered, his prayer and Scriven felt his burden miraculously lifted and he wrote the first two stanzas of a poem that evening to express his joy and he sent those two stanzas to his mother back in Ireland and she had an illness so to encourage her that first verse we opened with the second verse have we trials and temptations? 
Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our, share, our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. These are not just simple words or lyrics without a depth of meaning. It is his life that is in these lyrics. In the remaining years of his life, Scriven devoted himself to helping others in need, including by giving away his clothing and his possessions. And when one family, actually there's a story, when they lost their cow, which was a vital source of their income, although Scriven had no money, he gave them his watch to sell. And he also became known for acts of kindness, like cutting firewood for widows and helping the sick and the elderly. Later in his life, Scriven went home to visit his family and friends in Ireland, and yet because he had been quite well off, but was now returning in a poor, as a poor man in shabby clothes, he was snubbed and rejected by his former friends. And God's healing of the pain of this rejection became another part of his testimony and the inspiration for yet a third verse. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Then we'll find a solace there. During his final illness, a friend came across this three stanza poem, and he asked Scriven if he had written it. He said, the Lord and I did it between us, he answered. Jesus in the Gospel of John says that he chooses you. He chooses me and that he is as a friend to us. He's a friend, a lifelong friend, who will never, ever leave you, who will never forsake you. And indeed, in this gospel passage, he says, no greater love has this, but for a friend to lay down his life for another. Yes, indeed. Jesus has not only suffered enough to know any suffering that you and I are going through and will befriend us through, but he, he suffered and he sacrificed all for us. Jesus, in his life and in his public ministry in the last three years of his life, he was fortified by his friends. His friendships were central. His disciples were his friends. The apostles, the apostle Mary Magdalene was a close friend, as were Peter and John and James. And Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Lazarus and others. Friendships were important to him. And what happened to these friends is that they went on and they served their lives in honor of God, and they became the hands and the feet of Christ in their ministries, in their discipleship. And they befriended the lonely. They befriended the lost in the morning. They befriended the hungry. They befriended the oppressed, the imprisoned. They befriended those that needest, needed most a friendship to lift them up out of any kind of oppression and suffering and to help them find the new life that comes with God's love, the new life that comes with Jesus, who is our resurrected Christ. Friends, today as you go forth, remember that you have a friend for life in Jesus. And may you find your heart warmed as you share that blessed friendship with others. God bless you.
The brightness and dazzle of Easter has dimmed in our midst, O Lord. We have allowed ourselves to slip back into old habits and attitudes. Bring to us again your resurrection spirit, that we might know of your abiding love and presence. We want to place our trust in Jesus. We want to be of service to you by serving others. But our courage and strength waver, and we wonder if we can do the work you have set before us. It would be very easy to turn away. Turn us around, Lord. Remind us that as we have brought the names of those people who are near and dear to us, who need your healing mercies and comforting love, we too stand in need of the same compassion. We need your love. We need your guidance. You are the cornerstone. You are the strength to whom we can turn when our own strength has ebbed. Build us up to be a people of honor, integrity, and compassionate service to others. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that this is a place that feels welcome for you and that where you can hear a word of God and be touched in some way that is meaningful in your life. I send you forth with a commission and a benediction. Go now and bear fruit for God, fruit that will last 
As Christ has loved you, so love one another, and abide always with God in love, that your joy may be complete. And may God grant you all you ask for in Christ's name. May Christ Jesus reveal to you God's ways and call you his friends. And may the Holy Spirit confirm the truth within you and make your joy complete. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, alleluia, amen.